Okay, I'm videoing this myself today, so it might not, the camera might not be in the position as good as it could be, but we'll do the best we can. We've let the, the uh, glass bedding set overnight, and we're about ready to, to remove the, the panel and pull the symbols out, make sure they come out, and make sure the wood comes off the stock. Uh, I had a second thought after I got finished that I just thought that I would glass bed in the two the two other thimbles, which really is not necessary, but uh, I just thought I would do it uh, to show you how you, to do them all. Now, what I <coughs> have done is once the epoxy had set up for 20 minutes, I took the end of the drill bit and I put it in the hole on the other side with my fingers and worked it around to get the glass bedding out of the hole that goes down in where the where the screw comes through to release it off the edge of the barrel it makes it a little easy to come out the other thing we want to do is to take the frizzen plate off so that's not holding it in Now let's see how tight that is. Let's see, that's loose there already. All right, it seems that it's just holding here in this middle symbol. What I'm going to do is put in a, a little punch in that hole and just give it a little light tap. see the symbol come out quite nicely but we still have there it is all right there we are we've got all three little little bit of a void in that one and there's the there's the back of the and you can see now of course we have a an absolute perfect fit from the wood to the barrel. Now that is so much stronger than it would have been if we'd have just left it just the bare piece of wood. Now it looks a little messy because we haven't cleaned it up yet, but we're about to do that. And once we pull these thimbles out, then we can clean them up. But I don't, I don't clean them until after they're all glass bedded because we hand them a lot tap on them and it messes them up anyway so once more we'll put that down we'll put a couple of clamps on it to hold it tight and then we'll see if we can't get that lower thimble out like to put that dowel in there so we don't damage that even though this edge here on the top here this is going to be cut down considerably from where it is right now put a small dowel in down here just to hold that tight and one left There. Now this thimble, the lower thimble here, is the one that comes out the hardest. <clears throat> so we'll give that a try first. We can use the end of this dowel as the fulcrum point, put our wooden dowel in there, hold this down good and tight, and it's coming right out. There. Now we've got it glass bed in 
nice and tight. And it's nice and clean on the back side. And what we'll do, eventually we're going to sand this all the way out to the muzzle end, lowering these edges here by probably an eighth of an inch. But I like to leave it heavy while we're doing all this work of prying it out of glass bending it in. And I'm going to lift this in here so I can get the sandpaper on it. All right, now I've got my sandpaper block. I'm going to just sand the very face of this here. Clean it up nicely. And this symbol here that I already popped out, just stand the top edge of that, now it's, that cleans everything on the top. If you get a void in your, your glass bedding, like this one has a little tiny void off to one side, you can just go back and, and redo it, just mix up a little bedding. Fill that hole, squash your, your thimble back in, let it harden, and then you're right back to... It really doesn't matter if those are perfect, but uh, it bothers me to leave any any holes in it. Now we'll try, we'll just pull this one out here. There it is. That one come out. Quite nice. The uh, you can see that that symbol there is is nice and clean on the edge, and when this symbol is cleaned up, which we're going to do in a few minutes, it will it will pop right right back in there. This is the symbol here that has a little void right in the side there and I'm going to fill that and put the symbol back in while while we're cleaning the other uh, the brass on the other two symbols and this is this is what I had hoped that middle symbol would look like now we can put a piece of of sandpaper on a dowel having trouble holding this camera and talking at the same time and we will put it in here and we'll sand this down, right down until we're right down to the, the, the bottom of the wood. And none of this epoxy will show. And we'll do that right now. Okay, we're reset up here now. And I'm gonna show you how we just get the unwanted epoxy off of there. And again, we will put this little clamp on here to hold it tight while we do this give myself a little space here now we just wrap a piece of paper this paper here is 120 grit but it's very good quality paper and it's very sharp. Now you see how fast that's coming off. We want to be careful not to go too far because we don't want to lower that loading stick glue. All we really want to do just get get that epoxy off the you can see right there there's just a little bit of it left right there <sighs> the 
There's a little tad left there yet. And that should pretty much do it. <coughs> As you can see, the epoxy's gone off of that. And if we just take our, our bigger sanding block, sand it over the top, put our thimble back in. And remember, you always want to put your thimbles in the same place they come out of. Don't, don't shuffle these. And the mark is on, always on the front forward edge of the thimble. And it's important so that these tabs will come out in the right place. So in this case, we'll put it in here. We set it down in there. And there it is. As you can see, there's nothing, or can't see, I should say, you don't see any of the glass bedding around that at all. <clears throat> now, I'm just going to mix up a little glass bedding for this one, put that back in, and then we'll start to clean these thimbles. <clears throat> All right, I've snapped the lower thimble back in just to make sure that our loading stick will, will still go in and go to the bottom here. Sometimes the epoxy fills the hole. Uh, actually, it's a good idea to, once you put it, set it in the epoxy and wait the 20 minutes and take the screw out, what we should have done at that point is put, I, I just use one of these round uh, rasps in the hole, and if there's any epoxy there at when it's in that rubbery state, this pushes right through and it will go in there. Now, that's going in there pretty good, but I do feel a couple of lumps and bumps. So I'm just going to run that in and out a few times and make sure that that loading stick will go in. This loading stick can be thinned down just a little bit, but we don't like to get them too thin. And this, this stick has already been fit for here, so there it is. And it's gone right, well, what I call the bottom, which is, it's actually going not quite to the bottom. You can actually go as far as that front screw that holds the frizzen onto the lock plate. I leave a little bump of wood there from the, from the V at the bottom, and when we take this out, I'll tell you what I mean. That can be taken out, and uh, the hole can be tinged back, and that'll give you another inch on your loading stick, which, which is nice to have. Uh, as it is now, the the loading stick would just just barely be the length of the barrel. When there's a charge in there, there's just enough to get your hand on it. Another inch would be a big advantage. And the hole will break out into the to the frizzing mortise. But don't worry about that. It's there's nothing we can do about it. The the tolerances are so close here that we're working with that uh it's not weakening anything. Uh, so don't be a bit concerned if you see that the the loading stick hole actually breaks out into the lock mortise itself. All right, I've taken the the frizzen plate out, and we're going to take this off, and I'll show you what I mean on the back side. Now there's the there's the lock mortise itself and you see there is a a space there and here's the loading stick coming through in there this is the part that i was mentioning that i leave on there i like to leave it because of the everything is so thin down here but uh 
if you really wanted that extra, the loading stick would that could then go all the way to to that front hole that's in the uh, the, the front of the frizzen plate itself. But now we're going to to start to clean clean the. Uh, well, I'll put the rod in there just to show you what. Trying to watch the video here at the same time. That goes all the way in, and you can see what I mean by it stops on that little bump. But there it is. All right, I'm going to try to fill that little tiny void that we had on the first uh, attempt to glass bed that thimble in. And uh, <clears throat> I put a couple of pieces of masking tape on each side in case it does overflow here. It'll save me a little work from cleaning those two side panels. All right, I've mixed this up using the same color. I put the screw in from the bottom to fill that hole so it doesn't run down through. And I'm just going to put a very little right in the area where the where the void was. Try to get just a little bit more than I actually need in there. Make sure we have enough. Get my thimble, check for the mark on the forward part. This time this will drop itself right in because of the rings that are in the, that are molded right into the opening. Back that screw out a little. There. Now she's dropped right down in there. I'm going to put this little metal rod through so I can clamp down on that. Make sure that it stays down there good and tight. And I'll put one, I'll leave this one up front to keep this down there. While that is setting up, and that'll only take a half an hour, we can pull that and clean that, that demo itself. In the meantime, we'll go ahead and clean these. Now I've had some gun build, young, usually beginner gun builders say, this is the worst job in the world, it took me two weeks to clean the thimbles. I'm, I'm going to show you. It's uh, it's now 1042 and we're going to start to clean these and it doesn't take that long if you have a little little technique that uh, I will show you. <clears throat> okay, first thimble I'm going to do is the lower thimble which is of course the hardest one because there's more to it. What I do is I take a a dowel and I taper slightly for the first inch and a half or two inches so that the thimble will slide on to a point and then it, it holds it. But I don't want to hold it so that it won't twist at all. I want it to be able to turn and you'll see why a little bit later. <clears throat> now, I, use, I only use a couple of different tools on this. I use this this file, which is very thin, and it's it's also narrow in width, so that I can see where I'm going here, and I have this little I guess some you'd call this a needle file. Now this one is it's not round, it's oval shaped, so I use that the small edge 
to start putting in the rings around here and you'll see how that works very shortly. The thimble itself, and this goes for the the uh, the upper and middle thimble also, I file the end so it's smooth and clean. And then I take a, a big countersink and I put it in there and just by hand, I turn that so that I just take the point off the edge of the of the thimble so that it doesn't shave the rod as it goes in. Now we'll put that back on here. And uh, the other the other tool which is very, very handy is this abrasive cord. And I attach a clamp to each end because I can't hold this tight with my fingers. Some of you young guys are, are going to be laughing at that, but don't, don't laugh too long because you'll be in the same boat shortly. And that way, when I put it over here, I just hold on to the, to the clamps and I go back and forth. And you'll see how that works very, very shortly. All right, we know what tools we need, so now we're going to go ahead and use them. First thing I'm going to do is take that seam off there, which is from the casting. And that will come off very, very quickly. take very much. It's... These wax castings, they're such good quality. I can't believe how how nice and smooth they, they actually do get them. So we're going to stop right here making these uh, the curve part is as round as smooth as we can. We're just taking that little seam off there. Because this file has that nice smooth edge, we can go right up to the edge of those rings without any worry of, of damaging them. Now we're going to switch to a piece of this emery paper. This is 180 paper, which is fairly coarse. But again, I like to use the coarsest tool for a job that when you're trying to remove metal, and that's ba basically what we're doing. And we're only going to use this, this piece to get these round rings nice and smooth. And because that is so coarse, it doesn't take very much to take all those little extra bumps off there. But you want to be very careful when you're doing this not to get onto your, your flats there because that would certainly spoil it. But this... What I'm doing here now is mainly for those little narrow rings, and nothing more at this point. <clears throat> the next thing we're going to do is go in to the groove, that little tiny groove, which everybody seems to hate, but it's really not that hard. I use that 
that what I call a needle file. It's a little bigger than a needle file, actually, but it's got an oval shape on it, which gives it a narrow edge on the top and bottom. And I'm going to use that, get that loose. I'm going to use that right in the groove. And that little seam is in that groove too. But it doesn't take very much to clean the bottom of that groove. And, and this, this file is just perfect for doing this. That's all it takes, right there. And I'll start on the next one. I've seen these thimbles clean. In fact, I did one myself years ago. And I put it, an extra groove on this side right here, made it a groove, and it shortened up the flats here. And had had kind of a nice effect, but if you want to be something a little bit different, you can put that extra ring on. But in this case, I'm going to keep it just the way it is. That's enough there. And there's another little groove on the other side of that ring right there, and I'm going to do that right now. Rather than go back and look for the, <laughs> the needle file, just to do that ring. I do that a lot when I'm working, especially on the carving. If I have a gouge that fits and works in one spot, and there's... Another place, the same gouge will work a little bit further on in the design. I'll go ahead and I'll plunge cut that or do whatever just to be more efficient. And that's all that needs. For now. Eventually we're going to get in there with that round cord. Right now, we're going to go back to our little flat file and a piece of this emery paper and you can see the emery paper is quite a bit wider than the file but what I do is I hold the file over to the edge of the paper when I'm working up on this end of that flat I keep it on that edge. When I get to this end of the flat, I slide it back across the paper and use it here. Sorry, I skipped ahead. We've got to, first thing we do is go over it with the file first, and then we go to the emery paper. So, it doesn't take very long, but it's the same thing applies here. The file is not very wide. If you use a file that was as wide as that flat, you would be on here blind. You wouldn't be able to see what you're doing. But because that's narrow, I can see what I'm doing there by dragging it away from it every, every stroke. And when it's down just enough, I stop. Is the next one. I hope the camera is picking up that that shine on this, so you can see how quickly it happens. And this file is quite fine, but you can see how how quick that goes. I'll turn that a little bit to see if you can just see that. top flat is always 
the one that is the roughest because of that seam being on it. But even at that, you can see how quickly. And once you get all the, the bumps and scratches off, stop. Because you could file right through. The, the thickness of this wall in here is only 50 thousandths thick. That's before they cut the flats on it. So I'm guessing that when you get through putting these flats on, That wall there on the flat is probably only 30 thousandths thick. So once you get all the scratches and dings off of it, you want to stop. I have had some of these castings in the past where there was a dent in it or a flaw. And rather than send it back, I thought, well, I can... I can file that out, and sure enough, I went right through. All right, now, now we've got all the all the flats done with the file. Now we're going to go to the emery paper. Guess I'm getting a little anxious here. Now we'll go on that. And if you've done a good job, if you've done a good job on your filing, this goes very, very quick. Turn. Actually, there are files out there that are that will file as, as smooth as this emery paper file. And you could do the same thing with just files, but this works good. That's the way I've always done it. I guess you can't teach an old dog new tricks. I just want to do the old tr <laughs> tricks a little longer. All right, I've got all the flats done. That didn't take very long. <clears throat> now, while I've <clears throat> while I've got the file flat on this, I'm going to go over the wide part. On this little thumbnail that's on here. Get some of the heavy chunks off. If you let that emery paper just go over the edge of the file, you can cut a nice sharp corner right into there. But if I'd have started here with 600 grit paper, we'd still be on the first ring. Okay. Now you can even give that a little shoe shining there, which works very nicely. When you're doing this, just be careful you don't get up onto that 
flat. If you do, I mean, you can go back with your with your file and square them up again. But as I said, you can only do that so many times. There. Now, once again, we're going to switch over to a finer paper. And I just laid it down here. Here it is. I'm not sure what grit this is, but I bought a big uh, stack of paper, and they were marked odd, but uh, it's very, very fine. Not very good paper, don't last long, but I bought a stack of sheets like for a couple of dollars, so I bought it. And it works good, and when they get dull, I just throw them away. Just try to be a little bit frugal. <laughs> That's polite for saying cheap, I guess. <laughs> All right, now we're just going to go over the same place again. With this paper. I'm guessing that this paper is about 300 grit. Because it is doing it quite nice. And if you've done a good job with your other paper, your, with your file and your paper, it doesn't take just a matter of a few seconds. And you see I'm going diagonally across that. Once I, I go to a right angle across it this way, when I think that it's smooth, then I go diagonal, make sure that I don't have any scratches because it makes a different shine on it and they show up better when you file from a different angle. If you should come to a to a spot where the file made a big scratch and you missed it up till now if it's a real deep one, don't bother trying to get it out with this real super fine paper. Go back to your file. Take two or three strokes with your file instead of 50 strokes with the fine paper. And then go to your, your fine paper and correct the problem. Okay. That's looking pretty good there right now. Now I'm going to put this fine paper on here. Now all I'm hitting here is those little narrow rings right here in the very center of the curve. Yeah, and we do on this side too. And again, you want to be careful you don't you don't get on that flat and hit the flat. get up in this area here you put your finger on it it kind of molds to the curves and it'll get it down a little bit more now you see the tip of that that little thumbnail there that's got a, a casting mark in it and I can still see it so I am going to take the file and go back and get it all it took. Instead of me beating on it here for <clears throat> I'm gonna put the the file on this. Give us a little bit more pressure and I can get into that corner at the end of that thumbnail. 
I let the paper bend up over the corner of the file. You can get right in there and get a nice, nice sharp corner. Now, we still have to get in here in this, this convex area in, the, in that little ring. I guess you'd call that a wedding band ring. And uh, the way to do that is with a very narrow piece of emery paper. And I cut one here. All I could do is find it. There it is, a little narrow piece. So this will, this will take the contour of that, of the wedding band there. And it doesn't take very much to get right down over there because we've got the very top that's done. And this one will take about the same. Yeah. Now, now we're going to use this cord, this abrasive cord. <clears throat> now you can see how easy it is for me to hold on to this cord now with these in it. It just takes the agony right out of it. It only takes about 10 or 15 strokes with this cord if it's fairly new. And it lasts, it lasts quite a while. And it's not terribly expensive. I don't remember what I paid for it. It's been so long since I bought that. And I got that from Woodcraft. And I tried to get some of the flat cord that little flat cord works really nice when you when you're smoothing these round surfaces over. But the store that I went to, they said they didn't carry that one in stock, but I could get it through the catalog, and I never bothered to do that. It's something I should do because it is a nice tool. You can see how. This cord has really defined those rings. They're perfectly smooth and it brings them right up to a shine. And I'll go on the other side of this last ring here because that is a definite, definite circle. And that's it. Now I've seen people put another ring on on this side of the of the uh, smooth ring on top on both ends here and it kind of shortens the flat here and it has has kind of a nice look to it I did one years ago and I thought it looked pretty good but it is kind of contemporary but uh, for now we're going to settle with what we've got there now You're looking at this, and it's, I'm going to take this off. And you see, it's nice and clean, it's nice and smooth, but it certainly isn't polished up. Now, the purist would take and step down on the, on the emery paper and probably go down to six, seven, or 800 grit and do everything that I just did. 
And if I was doing a rifle for a collector that didn't want it done any other way, that's the way I would do it. But this is a hunting rifle we're working on here. And <clears throat> I'm going to actually put this on my buffing wheel. I'm going to say, uh-oh, buffing wheel is going to ruin it. Well, if you let it go on these corners, you are going to ruin it. So you have to be very careful. So what I use is a very hard wheel. And because it's hard, I can control it better. It's not overlapping, on the, and, I, and I, I try to stay away from those tips the best I can. But I'm going to go over there and do buff that right now, and uh, I'll let you see how I do it. And, uh, and you can make up your own mind whether that's a good idea or not. Okay, we're going to try buffing this. Now, when I'm doing this, this part here, of course, is no problem because it's got a curve to it. This part in here, that shoulder, that also is not a problem. I get these circles by using the edge, and then it just leaves the, the centers. When I do the centers, I bring it over flat on the wheel and just give it a very quick one. And you, you'll see how that goes in there. If I can just get on here. You want to hold on to it very tight. And of course, the wheel is going this way. Pretty hard manipulating around here with this camera in the way, but no point in doing it if you can't see it. Now, we're going to do the flaps. Now, <clears throat> I start on this side because the wheel's going this way. Ooh, that's hot. Try to center it on that flat. Just give it a quick one across. The next one I do the same thing to. Next one is the same. And the wheel. The wheel has quite a an arc on the face of it. So if you hold it just right, it only touches on the flat itself. Then I turn it in the opposite direction and I do the same thing. And that's pretty much it. Give this a little buffing here just because we're here. And that's it. We'll take it over the better light and you can look at it and make your opinion on it. Okay, I've got it all, all buffed now and I wiped it down with a paper towel. And here's what we ended up with. Now I would say that 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 is looking plenty good, particularly for a hunting rifle. And you can see the, the corners on the flats are still nice and sharp. That took me probably three minutes with the buffer, and it took me 
20 minutes to do the filing and the uh, emery paper on it. So easily these can be done to this point in a half an hour. Now we've got that thimble all cleaned, buffed up, wiped down with a piece of paper towel. We've got the glass bedding in there. Now we can just bring this over here. Put that in position and pop it right in there. Now, what we're going to do is we are going to <clears throat> drop this area here down to halfway on the flats on the sides. We just got a little ways to go. Once we get that done, down, then I'm going to continue this molding here, and I'm going to bring that molding all the way up to here. The reason I, I leave them short is so that when I work on this down here, there's more strength here, and we have less chance to split the wood here. So now that it's all in, the epoxy or the glass bedding is the reinforced glass bedding, by the way, is in underneath here. It's strong enough, and it probably would be strong enough without the glass, but for a hunting rifle, I think it's, it's a very easy thing to do, and it gives you a lot of insurance. It'd be terrible to, be, to take your rifle apart someday to clean it and then break it off here. So uh, that kind of reinforces that. Now... We just go ahead and, and do the other two thimbles. And we've got we've got one thimble now that we re rebed it because we had some voids in it. So I think we can go back and take a look at that now and pull that thimble out and see if we've closed those those voids. All right. Now here's the The thimble that uh, had a little void in the glass bedding that we took off, so we can take that tape off now. Nothing leaked out anyway. Take that bar out. Bring this dowel down a little for a fulcrum. Put this in and pop it out. Put a fulcrum in from both sides so that it comes out evenly. This is pretty fresh. Usually I leave these in overnight, but for the video, we're pushing it a little bit. All right, we've got the, the lower thimble done, and that's in the gun, and that come out quite nicely. So we're going to go ahead and do the other two thimbles, the upper and middle thimble. And we're going to do this exactly the, the way we, we did the last one, but by starting to take off the, the ridge line here, or the, the seam for the molding. But I'm not going to bore you with watching me do that all again. So we'll come back once they're done. We have the lower thimble all bedded in and polished up and we just got through doing the two lower thimbles and we can pop those in place and that one is the one that has the number one on it which means it's the forward thimble so we will just put that right in there and this one has the number two on it and we will put that right in there. Down here, just to keep everything straight. Now, eventually, we are going to 
I'll bring this light down lower here. Yeah. We're going to bring the top of the of this rod channel down so that it's halfway down the flat there. Right now it's just maybe maybe a third down on the flat. But we want that to come halfway down on the flat. And this other line you see right here, that pencil line, that runs right out to the end. And what that is, is we have marked the center of the barrel flat. We put a pencil line there and we put a straight edge on it and we run the line all the way up to here, to that point on the metal swivel part. And we, make, and we draw that line right down the edge. And then we do the other side the same way. And eventually, we are going to take and cut that side of that molding down right to that pencil line on both sides. That will narrow it down and really give it a nice slim trim look. We'll also end up rounding the top edges of these after we get them down to where they should be. We've had a nice morning's work here that we've rebed the middle thimble, popped these out, cleaned them, and buffed them up, and put them in place. So I think it's time to go in, have some lunch, and we'll come back out and do another project. <clears throat> All right, we're going to finish this molding down this far on both sides <clears throat> and then we're going to lower the top of the loading stick molding down all the way back to here down to the center of the flats and that so we're going to take this off Let's see the, the grain is a little bit the wrong direction so I've got to be very careful here yeah. I don't want to tear out a piece. <clears throat> I want to get a clamp on that. I'm going to put a put a dowel in here to hold this down steady for me before I start cutting on that. I want to be careful I don't go up beyond this top pencil line or below that that bottom edge there so we'll just I would rather do this from the other side but I can't get the camera on both sides and you could this, this whole molding here could have been done with this but of course when I did it I set this up and I I do this with with the, the milling machine but it could be done all right we've taken quite a bit off there now on both sides we're back to just about where we want to be what we'll do is to <clears throat> once we start working on the the piece back here will take this corner off and we'll round it right from the edge of the brass down to make it run over but before we do that we want to finish this off here i've got that going uphill on a little slope so i'm going to take a piece of sandpaper and just smooth that off so that We can't see any transition from back here. Got a little bit of a dig in it there. A little 
down to lift his little that will call it good enough now once we get the we'll have to replace this pencil line because at the edge where we're going to trim it <clears throat> once we get that done and trimmed off then we will go and we will sand this whole this whole edge we're going to lower this and then we'll sand this whole edge again but i think for right now that's that's pretty pretty good we'll get this side the same we're going to lower this down a little so it's down on that side flat a little bit more looking pretty good there right now <clears throat> now we've got all the symbols in everything pretty well shaped up there now I'll just put this dowel in here to keep give something to clamp onto clamp all up and then as you can see all we have to finish out to the end of the barrel is to put the nose cap on and uh, we'll do that at a little later all that has to be done on the to put the nose cap in and this is the the other side without the groove in it of course and what we'll do is to drill right through this one and into this base here and that will hold the, the nose cap on but uh, we're getting there starting to starting to uh, really shape up here if we're not careful we're going to have a swivel breech rifle here pretty soon now we've got this this pencil line on there that we've uh, that we're going to end up trimming these these panels back and by working on here we've erased the line so what I'm going to do right now is to replace that carry that back up right up to here And that's the new line and this side it just about has run out it's not even worth putting back I like lines I like to be able to have a reference point as often as I can we'll darken that a little bit now when we trim that we'll have a, a good a good dark line to follow all right now that we've got all the symbols in we've got the side panels grooves all the way up beyond the lower symbol the lock plate is in or I should say the frizzing plate we're going to have to deal with this section right in here and this is probably the toughest part of the whole uh, building of a swivel breech the, the loading stick hole is so close to this surface you've got to be very very careful I mean super careful so the first thing we're going to do is measure and see just what we do have for distance between the bottom of the hole and the top of the stock. And for that, I'm going to 
measure with this set of calipers. According to this, we've got 70 thousandths of clearance right here between there and the hole itself. That's not too bad. That's that's quite a bit to work with, really. What we've got to do, the first thing, is to bring these this panel down to match the bottom edge of this prison plate and right now it's I would say it's 30 thousandths that we've got to take off of here so we're going to be very careful that we don't take off any more than we absolutely have to to get down to that so we'll get something to hold that in place I think I'll slide the rifle down. And the best way to take that down, believe it or not, at this point, is with a piece of sandpaper. It's so fragile here that uh, any other way, you could rasp you could use a rasp on it for the first little bit but uh, getting it right to the finished edge is going to require a, pe a good piece of sandpaper all right we're going to try and lower this down we're actually going to lower this about as as much as that step i put in there i really should have made that step a little deeper i was being a little too careful when i was uh, running this through the machine but uh, we'll do it with the with the rasp and some sandpaper. It'll just take us a little bit longer. If you want to use a good good sharp rasp and not too coarse because it will tear the edge, and you want to be very very careful not to do that. If you tragedy to to destroy this piece of wood. If we did, we would have to go through all the business of inletting all the symbols, and we also would have to change the other side because these panels are matched. They're cut from the same piece of wood, split apart, so the, that the grain matches on both sides here. <clears throat> I've got this <clears throat> down quite a bit. This is a, again, this is only 120 grit sandpaper, but it's, there's something about it. I, I really like it. It cuts way better than any other sandpaper I've ever used. Let's take a look and see how that prison fits in there. Oh, that's, that's good. That's really good. I think I took that much off. I'm going to check what we have there for distance again. Now that we've lowered this, but what I tried to do was to take more, more off down in this section down here and to leave it as a slight taper up towards the thermal because I really don't want to lower this down here. And what we're going to end up doing down here is we're going to put a molding around this. And we'll bring that molding down as far as we dare to so that it still looks good, to just in order to leave as much wood there as possible. <clears throat> All right, hasn't changed much there. No, not bad, not bad at all. We've got, uh, we've still got good 60, 60 thousands of wood there, and that's enough to work with. So now we need a little design. All 
All right. Now we're going to lay out a little a little molding around right around where the lock or the frizzing plate should be. And that doesn't have to be very big. I like that to be maybe a quarter inch or maybe slightly more. It can be more or less. And this is similar to what you would have on, on any rifle. <clears throat> and then the, the molding that would go in front of this. And uh, I think I'll bring a rifle out here and compare it to what we have here just to show you where we're going. <clears throat> now I brought this rifle out because this is exactly what we are, are looking for. We've got a little panel here and this is that little molding that I just cut in around the prison face. And this is the molding out front. Now, I think I I can extend that this molding back a little further than this one, and it would still uh, look all right. So I think we'll we'll go ahead and draw that on there. Now, doesn't matter which end we start on here first. So, I'll start right here. And we're just going to make this shallow cut here. lenses on for this. It's a nice hard piece of wood anyway, that's that's a good thing. Once we get a an edge cut here. We can put one of those little needle files up against the edge. Right now we just need a little little groove. There's this step doesn't have to be very much just shows where the molding is you don't really have to put one on there but it looks a little little strange it just looks a little too plain if you don't have some of these moldings on And they're really quite easy to do, and they doesn't take very long. I'm pretty sure I have more than enough wood here as far as depth, but I can't. I can't help. That'd be nervous. In this cut, we want to bring it back right to where the, the molding around the prison plate will be so it all comes together in one place.
this way we'll eventually end up doing this with a gouge. working better this way than it is the other way. All right, I got a little edge there that I can get a file up against. Very shallow gouge. Now I can use this also to cut that a little bit. enough so that little piece comes out. You can see I'm actually going cross grain there. If your your gouge is good and sharp, you can do that with no problem. <clears throat> All right, we're getting our edge cut down pretty good there. Now I'm using this gouge, which is very very sharp. cross grain here to take the center down pretty much as far as I'm going to go. Any beyond that I'll do with piece of sandpaper but I will check I'll check it every once in a while by measuring to see that I'm not going to go through there now this is going to come down here here where I can put my little file on this. I 
I think I probably can do that right now. All right, I've turned the vices up a little so I can get in here and do what I have to do. It's not a very good angle for the camera, but I've got to have it down in position or I can't do it. I'm looking at this line down here and I'm trying to come into that line very gracefully. The last of this will do with a piece of sandpaper. Wood comes off quite a bit quicker with with the gouge. I used to do this part just with my carving knife. Getting a little close to that now. Now I can put my file on here. Eventually, I'll have to take this handle right off so it gets right down close to the barrel. But we're all right just yet. The other side, I I got that down, curved around so that it's in, in pretty good shape there right now. So I'm working on this side here to bring this up to to match this piece. This piece along here. That curve just kind of goes up here and, and peters out. I think the best, best way to do that is I did it on the other side. I did it with a piece of sandpaper. I cut some of this off first. It 
it's really a concave cut and we want to try to keep that edge about the same I think the safest way to do that is with a piece of paper and a dowel See, I'm coming down now so that this edge along here is running the same all the way, which is what we want. And this is making a rather concave line. Just till we get up to where that symbol starts to curve. And then we'll blend it right into this face here. A lot of this stuff we come back to when we're doing the final finish. Now I think we can get our file back on here. You notice I moved the rifle closer to the rest so I can get my hand back here for, for clearance. Now. We will be rounding this edge here a little bit, but not just yet. I'm going to move this back up. Up here so I can work on the, on the molding that's close to the frizzen. Don't forget this line cut and established in there nicely. Then we can start to shape that. And again, you wanna know where the center is on that. As we know that point is, so we'll just put that pencil mark right there. And we will eventually take that off, but right now, it's just a guide. You see this edge, doesn't have to be very, very high to be effective. bringing this side down as narrow as we did on that side. Oh, quite a wind out there.
Now I just measured this section here. We've still got 50 thousandths here, so we're in good shape. Now I'm gonna continue. Just getting the shape of this. little bit here I'll have to take the the wood off the barrel to get it so we'll just do what we can right here the next time we take the wood off the barrel we'll follow that through We're ready for sandpaper on that. Without that light, Right there, you wouldn't be able to see what I'm doing right now. Take that light away, it all disappears. I'm just coming up and touching that line now. It's looking pretty fair at this point until we get to a little finer paper. But uh, I think we can use this paper just for just a bit more if I can find my little file. There it is. You put a stick on it or a file or whatever. It's flat. It takes all those little little humps and gouges out of it. Just want to be careful you don't spoil that sharp edge on your molding. This is still the same coarse paper that I was using. Well, I call it coarse, but compared to what we're going to put on here in the end, it's Now, <clears throat> the piece around the tang is actually go going to, to be beveled down too, and we'll do that with a piece of sandpaper, and we can do that right now. I don't want to lower the edge that's right up against the, the thimble itself. I'm just going to bevel this here right up to the sharp edge. just trying to contour this piece to match the piece below it. And you got a center line on there too. Wanna be careful we don't take that down. I think that's about all we can do with, with the coarse paper until I take that off 
and I take this wood right off the stock, then I can get right down to the edge. But we're not going to do that right now. Now we pop that pimple in there. Put this frozen back in here. finish this the moldings here around the lower thimble so I think it's time to trim off the, the width of the of the panel itself and uh, lower the top edge of the ramrod groove so we'll take this we'll take this thimble out And we'll get our mark on here a little stronger. Now what we're, we're doing, we're splitting this flat here. I got that mark on there good and dark. There it is there. <clears throat> now we'll take this straight edge. And we'll put it here. That straight edge goes right from this corner of the swivel, the point on the from the flat piece, which is the same as the bottom of this right now. So I'll just match it up right there and bring this one out to the pencil line. And I put a clamp on this to hold it tight. I've also put a couple of screws up through from the bottom into where the thimbles go to make sure that that panel is on there exactly straight. There, there's a little bit of movement in there, so if it was over to one side, the line would be false. But we know it's, those screws are holding it tight. So, try to hold that lead as close to plumb as I can. That's one side. And now we'll do the other side. On this end here, we line it up with the very top of the prison plate where it's square on the back side there. That looks pretty good. Not much to take off on this side. mark down there so I'm gonna take that sandpaper and just take that off and do it again. Once you get this these flats down then we will be resanding these grooves over and even them all up.
that again. about nothing coming off right where the, the thimble is. But it's all right, it's enough. All right, we've got that. In the uh, nose cap, you can see that the casting is just a little tiny bit wider than than where I've marked, so there'd be a little bit of filing on the edge of the of the uh, nose cap, and of course they're going to be emery papered, and but those will smooth up very very quickly. These are great castings. Now there's a number of ways that you can you can take that this wood off to that line. And if it was, let me get this screw out. If the wood to come off was as narrow as it is right along here, I'd well, be no question you would do that with just a piece of hand sandpaper. You can see there's hardly any anything there. But this side is a different story. And even that, that you could do that with hand paper, but I'm not going to. I just bothers my shoulders too much and I don't have to. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it over to my belt sander and take that down right to the to the line. And I'll I'll show you how I do that. It's very simple. Most everybody has a belt sander. All right, now, this is the side here that hardly has anything to come off, so we're not gonna put that on this sander, but we will put it on the big belt sander, make it nice and straight. So, what we're gonna do is just get close to that, <clears throat> to that line, and this, this machine will do it very, very close. See how quick that's taking it down, but I've left the line. But I'm going to get my other glasses. Okay, now I can see. This belt is a very fine belt, so it, it's very controllable. This one here, I'm not going to change the belt. This is a coarse belt, so I'll have to be quite careful.
That's it. Right. Nice and slim that is now. I left a little bit of that, that line so that I could finish it off by hand. Looking good. Right, now that we've got the sides down, we've got to <clears throat> lower the the flats down a little bit on uh, on both sides of the rod channel itself. It's not as uh, much coming off there as I thought. I just put the thimbles in and check them. But you want to start right here at the lower symbol. And if you've got a good sharp piece of sandpaper, it doesn't take any time at all. I was tempted to lay this on my belt sander or whatever, but you really can't see what's happening right there when that's upside down. So rather than take a chance of losing all that work we've done. Just a little, it's about a 30 second to come off to come down to the level of the, of the nose cap. <clears throat> the nose cap, you can see the hole is already drilled between the barrels, so it's just, it's going to have to do. That little tab is left on there so that this end of the nose cap holds the very end down nice and tight. <clears throat> And you can see the the tips on this are just a little bit lower. So we're gonna very, very close. I'm gonna let the finished paper take the rest of it off. <clears throat> Now we can finish up the, the two channels that run alongside the, the rod channel and make it smooth because that was just done with the, with the milling cutter. I miss having Lily here to do my video on for me. Does such a good job. You can get that camera right in, and you can see really what I'm doing here. But uh, I don't know why. But her mother and father thinks it's more important for her to be in college than it is be uh, helping her papa. I guess they're right. I've taken, uh, sanded both sides and the rod channel itself. And the only thing left to do here, as far as shaping it goes, is when I <clears throat> cut the rod channel itself, I leave it just, it's probably somewhere between five and ten thousandths above the, the nose cap. So once the nose cap gets fit, then that should be brought down to match the, the nose cap itself. Now that that's all sanded, it's not finished sanded, it's just with the 120. I'm going to go and take the corner, the point off the corner, so that that edge won't be a sharp edge and it just kind of rolls it over 
and all of a sudden it becomes a molding. You see how that is. The curve comes up and then it just kind of rolls over the top. Very, I don't know what you'd call that, artistically. But it looks good anyway, whatever it is. Once we get this done, we're going to swap over to the other side and do the panel on the other side, which is a whole lot easier than this side because we don't have the thimbles or the ramrod grooves to deal with, so it just, that goes very quickly. A lot of the stuff that I'm doing there are other ways of doing this stuff, and when you're building your rifles, your rifle, you can do it any way you want. You may have some better ways of working than what I'm doing. Everybody seems to have their own idea, but it works good. And that's why the, the long rifles are all... You never see two absolutely identical, even when they're made by the same person. I know when I'm building, like, I'll be working along on it, and all of a sudden something comes in. I say, gee, this would look better if this was done a little different, differently. Or hmm. sometimes I change it in midstream. Happens a lot with the carving when I'm doing my carving. But that's what makes these guns so nice. You can use your own imagination. That's it. That's all it takes. Our matching really is the first of four 
four or five inches. After that, it's just a matter of rounding this, these edges over and trimming the edges like we did on the other side. So we'll use this as a as a pattern. I'm gonna bring that up to there and there. We'll put this back so it doesn't get broken. Get our straight edge so we can get a straight, accurate line on here. In the center of the panel. Again, all that is is a, a guideline for us, and this we know is going to come down here. About a quarter of an inch from the from the end of the prison. Just make that a rough thick line. And then this piece, I could make a little pattern off the other side, but I, I don't think we have to do that. can just <clears throat> match that up as we did on the other side but this side is so much easier because we don't have that void on the in, on the side so we can go ahead and stamp stamp the the cuts for the front panel the the line around the the Fresno that has a round bottom to it, so we'll do that the same way we did the other side. I better get another clamp on that. redraw that that line anyway I'll just put a guideline over here so I'll know when the point will come I like that to come back so it comes way around you don't want it to end at a right angle gives it a little a little more artistic when it you don't want to go any deeper than we did on the other one all right <clears throat> we don't have to worry about the rod channel on this side so we can go ahead and stamp in this front molding. So I get the right radius here.
All right, we're going to stamp in the first part of this molding. We don't have any rod channel underneath to worry about. So we can just go ahead and cut this in. Now you might notice I'm not I'm not really following my pencil line. Because my pencil line is wrong. The gouge will make a cleaner circle and I can draw. That's why I'm not too concerned about putting the circle in. But we're not getting in close enough, so I'm going to have to finish the last bit of it with my knife, which works fine. Now I'm going to have to switch glasses again. Now I can take my, my gouge. <laughs> 